I'm assuming after, you know, we have grown a little bit more internationally, probably raised as a, a C round, uh, A round. Yeah, yeah. Not C, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, a round. I like the way you're thinking, so, though. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, I can do it <laughs> up until then. Great to be here. Um, my name is Mika, Mika Kasanen. I'm the co-founder and CEO of, CEO of Schoolday. I'm in my 40s, so my previous career I was in business consulting. That's something I did for 10 plus years. Always wanted to be an entrepreneur. Now I've been doing Schoolday for three years almost, so it's been very exciting. If I uh, probably someone asked my grandma, um, she would probably say that, that I'm working in some kind of technology thing uh, focused on schools, and that's as far as it goes. Yeah, yeah. Um, closer friends probably, or the buddies uh, would probably describe that just working continuously compared to my previous <laughs> life. So <laughs> basically, the whole idea and the design of school day, we started to look into. Uh, education, what's happening in Finland and also in the world. And we realized that Finland, what is nowadays known for is education. Anywhere you go, yeah. I mean, people recognize and uh, know the Finnish education system, yeah, yeah. of course, which is an abstract thing, but still. But there haven't, hasn't been, you know, any global success stories, scalable um, technologies like uh, that have made it, you know, internationally. And that's what we decided that we want to, you know, build a scalable uh, solution and a company coming from Finland. Mm -hmm. And very soon we realized that we want to focus on student well-being because uh, that's the differentiator why Finland has done so well because we always like placed well-being at the center of learning. Wow. And that's basically what school day is about. So um, we ask students regular questions about their well-being, research-based. And by doing so, we provide, you know, feedback for the students. But not only that, we also analytics for teachers and mm -hmm. principals and even the district leaders. So they basically get a pulse on, on what's happening in the schools and classrooms. And what kind of interaction, what does that interface look like? Is, is it an app that the students have? Is it on a desktop? Yeah, basically we uh, support all the different platforms. So, so we have the, the native apps for the students uh, and also the web web sort of interfaces and even Microsoft Teams integrations. What it basically how it works is for the students, they get like a few questions regularly, just icons uh, from like green to, to, to red, mm -hmm. like on a scale of five to different statements, you know, um, around how much they support they get for, for their learning, you know, how are they eating, how are they sleeping and so on. So okay. um, that's how, that's the whole core and everything that is sort of based on, on the data, the responses, the voice uh, of the students. But what's really important is, is like uh, the data and the analytics is, is all anonymous. Mm -hmm. So we don't pinpoint any sin individual you know, students in the data. So, so the group level we, or class level is, is the smallest sort of unit that we provide the analytics. Mm -hmm. But with school day, it scales as you mentioned. So you, you can see the, the sort of classroom, um, school, different regions, uh, like in a, in a district or the whole district level. So we have different, you know, uh, interfaces then for the different roles um, yeah. using the, the platform. And how big of a role does government funding play in financing your startup? I think this is based on my, my three years experience now. I think it's something for a startup and, and an early phase com company, I think governments keep them close, but they cannot support you that much. So yeah. you have to find the product market fit first yeah. and prove that your solution works. It's solving a sort of problem that's that's real. And uh, <clears throat> you know, you can provide the real benefits and values. But I see in, in compared to other industries, governments then in, in later stages can, can play a very significant role uh, in, in supporting the companies. But you have to have the product market fit and reach a certain level to be sort of a, a legitimate and, and, and you know, scalable solution for, for say, a, a particular country or, or whatnot. Would governments be an ideal customer profile for you? Or like, is that the end game is to like run it for a country, you know? <laughs> I think that that'll be like the, the end game, yeah. uh, the target where you want to go. 
Yeah. Uh, of course, and that's that's what makes it very exciting, because um, with with like technology, there's so much potential on on sort of a governmental level that that's still sort of un, 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 untapped, to be honest. Yeah. And there are already really good solutions that will help a lot. So when you start to think about the budget, budgets, decision making, and all that, how you allocate the resources. Yeah. Um, could make like huge benefit to have like real time data yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and knowing what's really going on in, in the different sort of uh, districts, municipalities or whatnot. Why do you think ed tech companies adopt a SaaS business model? I think it's how the industry has grown. Um, there are so different models and I think all the different models have been tried in ed, ed tech as mm -hmm. well. I think the SaaS model is, is the one that works really well because what we're at the end of the day talking about is is uh, long sales cycles and then you know how the all, all the technologies and platforms have evolved SaaS makes the most sense uh, for the companies who provide the solutions but for the clients as well mm -hmm. so it's 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 easy um, predictable and sort of yeah you must have extremely low churn I would imagine well it's Depends, I guess, a lot on, on what you're actually doing. Um, so in a way, like churn, looking from the user perspective, it's, it's, it's I'd say, pretty normal to, to other industries. Mm -hmm. But of course, like once you get, like sign a client or just a client to talk about, it could be a school, uh, a number of schools or, or a district, um, the churn might be, I guess uh, a little bit lower than, than, than in some industries, some yeah. other industries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like a twofold you know, story, I think. Yeah. How do you handle the financial reporting then? What does that look like? Because you said you've never done it before. So. It's, uh, that's been a fun learning process, mm -hmm. but I mentioned the, uh, one of my, uh, the co-founders of School Day who has like much more expe experience in, in finance. So he has been a great sort of mentor even mm. on, on the finance things. But how, how I've basically approached it is as I've asked just, you know, very basic questions from our investors. Um, and of course, I mean, people who have more experience in, in, in you know, entrepreneurship and running a company. Yeah. So knowing what's like sort of expected uh, from the investor side and then like all the regulations and, 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 and all those. So, um, I think it's just about, you know, understanding that it's okay to ask simple, yeah, yeah, well, I mean, basic sure. questions and, and, and sort of just, you know, then get your hands dirty and, and start working on it. So it's not rocket science yeah, yeah. in a way. So what do you do to relax then? Like, what, what, how do you blow off steam after, you know, <laughs> working for all those hours? It's, it's a learning process uh, as well, how you sort of take time off and relax. Uh, I've learned and sort of made decisions that I try not to work work on Sundays and even Saturdays, which has worked out pretty well. Of course, there are different phases in the company, and if you're fundraising or, or something like that, of course you have to be like working 24/7. But but you know, trying to keep the weekends off. Is there any learning that you do for um, for leisure, shall we say? Are you learning Spanish or? You know, <laughs> have you started crocheting or baking or anything like it? To be honest, uh, not right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, but I, as I mentioned, I mean... Every day you learn in this job. Every right? day. And what I keep saying to the team as well is, is that, uh, of course, we are creating code. That's a nice thing. And, uh, but as a startup, the only thing actually that you create is, is learning. And, and then it's a matter of how, far, how fast you learn and then what you should improve and then just, you know, repeat. Extra cur curricular activities, not so many at this time, maybe cooking, because <laughs> a bit more, spending more time at home. So that's something I've gotten into, but it's not really that much work related. Good man. Yeah. Mika, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it's thank been you. super interesting chatting to you and uh, really appreciate you coming in here. Thank you. This was much fun. <laughs>